Hello and welcome to my channel. This is going to be another video about charcoal basics and in this one I'm going to be talking about how you can create realistic drawings using charcoal. In my opinion uh, there are four key elements or four key components to realistic drawings. And now before I move on to the main part of the video I just want to tell you that I'm a self-taught artist and there are other artists who may interpret these concepts in a slightly different manner. And the second thing I want to tell you is that everything I'm going to talk about applies to graphite pencils and colored pencils and some other types of media as well. Now let's get to it. By the way, I'm going to be using this drawing of a flying goose for my demonstration today. And as usual, I'm going to be using charcoal pencils and vine charcoal for drawing. So once again, a lot of these things apply to graphite as well, but I'm going to be talking about everything through the perspective of a charcoal artist. Now, like I said, in my opinion, there are four key elements to creating realistic drawings, and these are accuracy, value, contrast, and edges. So first, I'm going to explain these concepts and provide some examples, and then I'm going to demonstrate how they're applied in real time on this charcoal drawing of a flying goose. I thought it was uh, as good a subject as any for this drawing, so let's get to it. So the first thing is the accuracy of your sketch or the basic form of your subject. It means whether the sketch you drew resembles the real thing in terms of basic shape, proportions and main parts. In one of my previous videos, I did the sketch of an elephant. So the accuracy here means whether my sketch actually looks like an elephant, whether everything is in place, whether it has all the main body parts like the trunk, ears, legs, and whether they are all proportionate to one another. To improve your accuracy, you need to practice drawing freehand and using eyeballing. Eventually, you'll see that your ability to understand shapes and gauge distances can be improved like everything else. The second element is value. It means how dark or how light something is. When you're working in charcoal, you don't have colors. So we need to express a range of tones through a range of value by putting more charcoal or less charcoal in certain areas depending on how dark they need to be. So if we Look at this drawing of a wolf. The animal has some portions of lighter fur here and there. So naturally, where the fur is almost white, we'll use less value and less charcoal. And where the fur is darker, we'll use more. However, we'll also have darker values in shadow areas, even if they are of lighter color. This is why uh, this fur here uh, looks so much darker than the fur here because it's facing away from the light source and is in the shadow. Similarly, if we look at this drawing of Legolas from the Lord of the Rings, we can see that even though he has pale complexion and uh, blonde hair, the light source is coming from here. And this side of the face is a lot lighter than this side of the face. So this is the shadow side and this is the light side of the face. We use different values to express these things. And also if you look at some other areas, like for example, here under the eyebrows, there is also some shadow. Or under the nose, under the lower lip, under the chin, under the jaw here. These are all areas of darker value. We use these areas of lighter and darker value to convey to the viewer what the shape of the object is. And that leads us to the next element, which is a contrast. Contrast is basically a difference between lighter and darker value. And we can see whether something is lighter or darker through contrast. Contrast can be used to make something pop uh, from the background or capture the focus of the viewer. Contrast can be used to create an illusion of depth, distance and volume. If we look at this drawing of a mountain, uh, here I used contrast uh, to 
make the this mountain top stand out against the background we have a dark murky sky and then we have these uh, sunlit snowy peaks of a mountain and this contrast in value makes these peaks really stand out look at the reflection in the wolf's eye how this highlight stands out that's because of the contrast because everything around it is a lot darker that's another example of why contrast is so important the final element are the edges if we want to show the shape of an object we need to have edges now in simpler drawings like that sketch of an elephant we do this with lines with more complex drawings uh, we need to show edges using contrast in value if you look at this drawing of John Wick you'll see a very clean edge here on the left side of his face the left side of the, uh, of the face is the light side because the light source is coming from this side and this is the shadow side all right so the background is a little bit darker and here we have a very clean very well defined edge this clean edge which is a edge to value it is an edge bet between uh, darker value an area of darker value and lighter value is important because we need to show the shape of an object and we need to show where this object or in this case this person's face ends and where the background begins and like I said in simpler drawings we just draw a line here but in realistic drawings that's not enough we need to show shapes and lighting all right now in some cases you will have a very clean edge like here because this is clearly the end of that side of the face and this is where the background begins now in some other places like for example here between in in this area between the cheek and the mouth we still have some kind of an edge but it's not quite as clean in this one so there is a slightly softer edge slightly blurrier edge and in some cases like for example here in between this cheekbone and the eye socket or the cheekbone and the cheek we have a smoother transition if you want to see more smooth transitions we can have a look at this drawing of Liv Tyler as Arwen and you can see how uh, we have a smooth transition here between the area of lighter value and darker value so you need to differentiate between uh, the hard edges or clean edges and softer edges and softer transitions but either way you can see how all of these concepts kind of tie in together because they are inseparable you can't really talk about accuracy in your drawing of your or, or accuracy of your sketch if you don't understand edges and why edges are important you can't create edges if you don't have contrast and you can't create contrast if you don't have differences in value and if you don't have a range of value so all of these elements are important in creating a realistic looking drawing now we are going to move on to that drawing of a duck and I'm going to show you how these concepts are applied in real time uh, in this drawing. I'm going to do the sketch now and I'm going to do the sketch with a piece of vine charcoal and yes it is vine charcoal I sharpened it a little bit so that it kind of looks like a pencil but you can sharpen vine charcoal sticks with a sharpener or you can just scribble on the paper a little bit to, until you get a nice tip and I'm gonna start with the wings my reference photo is gonna be in the top left corner so that you can follow along and uh, see whether my sketch is accurate or not I'm gonna to try to do the best I can even though it doesn't have to be 100% accurate but before I started sketching with vine charcoal I did a little bit of uh, imaginary sketching with my finger so that I would give myself a rough idea uh, where everything was going to be and I wanted to place the bird in the roughly in the center of the paper so I'm creating these discontinued shapes because uh, these are feathers and uh, the 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 line of the wings is not straight and I'm going to be refining the appearance of those feathers later 
and also now I'm moving on to the head and I'm going to be refining the shape of the head and the beak later as well because I wanted it to look like the beak and the head of a real goose and um, at first I wasn't really happy with it and now I'm moving on to the rest of the body and the tail and these legs which are kind of tucked in uh, when the goose is flying so this is the basic shape the outline and as you can see vine charcoal is very easily moved and modified either with your hand or with a kneaded eraser so when I finish that initial stage uh, with vine charcoal and when I'm sure that my sketch is fairly accurate that I have all the main parts and that it looks pretty good in terms of proportions then I can move on to using charcoal pencils. Now charcoal pencils are something a little bit more permanent than vine charcoal because they're a little bit darker they stick to the surface of the paper a little bit more and they're a little bit more difficult to erase so now I'm going to be going over these lines uh, with a charcoal pencil basically uh, going over the lighter lines with some darker lines but uh, at the same time I'm going to be refining uh, my sketch adding some details and adding a little bit of shading so this process is kind of similar to the inking portion uh, of the drawing when you're drawing comics so first you do the sketch with a graphite pencil and then you go over it with a marker or a brush so this is kind of similar because I first did a lighter sketch with vine charcoal it's easily modified and now I'm doing a more elaborate drawing and going over some of these lines and a little bit more boldly and because now I'm sure that um, everything is in place so I'm gonna start drawing these individual feathers uh, because you can make out their shape here because they're kind of fanned out spread out at the tip of the wing and as you can see uh, I'm doing a little bit of shading on those tips of those feathers and th this part of the wing is going to be a little bit darker at the top and it's going to be getting a little bit lighter towards the bottom and towards the right side of the wing that's because of the light source uh, because the tip of the wing and those feathers they are kind of curved slightly uh, towards us uh, which means that uh, a part of them is facing a little bit away from the light source so uh, they're just a little bit darker so the tips are going to have a little bit more shadow and here as you can see I'm trying to refine these individual feathers which are kind of tucked closely together at the bottom of the wing and here I'm moving on to the beak and trying to refine the shape of the head at the same time going over it with a charcoal pencil. The charcoal pencil I'm using by the way is a Warrison woodless charcoal pencil and I'm going to be using a medium one and a soft one. Uh, the medium one is going to be my main drawing tool because I'm going to do most of the drawing and shading with it but the soft one is a little bit darker and I'm going to use it for the darker areas to add some more contrast. Alright. Alright, so I'm probably going to continue shading with a medium charcoal pencil and do some more work on this wing here. So if you look at the reference photo, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a huge contrast between the wing on the left and the one on the right and that's because of the light source as I've already explained uh, the other wing the one on the right is facing away from the light source and is in the shadow so the one on the left is going to be a lot lighter uh, because uh, the, the light is hitting it from above uh, the upper part of it uh, is going to be just a little bit darker so I covered that with a little bit of uh, medium charcoal pencil but now I'm using a tutillion to blend that and 
Uh, this probably sounds horrible, but the uh, truth is that I'm uh, that, that I'm uh, varying the amount of pressure here because I don't want everything to be uh, quite the same in terms of value. I want uh, the part on the left and to towards the tip of the wing to be a little bit darker. And <clears throat> I'm making everything a little bit smoother with a brush, but... I will later further define these individual feathers. Right now I'm shading the bigger areas, the, the larger areas of uh, lighter and darker value. So and now I'm going to move on to the darker wing. And here I'm not using a medium charcoal pencil, I'm using a soft charcoal pencil here because I want this one to be darker. So this uh, upper part of the wing especially is going to be almost completely black. It's not exactly black but it appears very very dark in my reference photo. So you can see how I'm also trying to separate some of these individual uh, feathers. And uh, now I'm blending everything with a tortillion. Now the reason why I'm using a uh, tortillion in this initial uh, stage is because I don't want to push charcoal uh, beyond the edges. I need some more accuracy and the uh, tortillion with a nice tip allows me for more precision. So I want to preserve the edges as much as possible. Uh, but where I'm trying to create softer blending and softer transitions I'm using a brush. <clears throat> now another neat trick that you need to remember with a brush is that when you want to preserve a clean edge and you're using a brush you need to point the tip of the brush towards that edge that way you're blending to that edge and not beyond it and a particularly useful tool for that is a bristle brush with a crop tip so you just shorten the brush a little bit and it becomes a very good and precise blending tool you can also see here that I decided to approach the drawing from the left side so that I can point the tip of the brush towards the edge that I want to preserve and that way I'm blending all the way to that edge without it actually going over the edge. This is a very useful technique if you want to use a brush and blend smoothly but at the same time not ruin your edges. You can always clean up your edges a little bit using erasers but if you don't have to clean them in the first place that's even better. And sometimes it's, it, it can be a little bit difficult to clean them up if you've pushed a little bit of charcoal in there, so it's better to keep them clean if possible. So I'm moving on to this uh, tail uh, area, and the tail here kind of fans out while the legs um, are tucked in, uh, while the, the goose is flying. That's probably uh, so that there would be less uh, wind resistance. Um, I can't really make out all of the detail here in my reference photo but I'm just going to do the best I can and uh, maybe simplify it a little bit. So now moving on to the belly area and again because of the light source this lower portion of the belly is going to be darker than the upper portion towards the back and the neck. So I'm going to shade both and there are also some lighter areas which are almost completely white but I'm not gonna leave them completely white but you can see that I'm shading all of this area which is covered with light brown brownish feathers and I made sure that I separated the light side from the shadow side and the shadow side is the belly portion of the body and now I'm doing this neck and I'm covering all of that with a soft charcoal pencil as well because that area appears really dark in the reference photo. So <clears throat> I'm blending that uh, with a brush a little bit so that I can make everything a little bit softer. I want smoother transitions uh, on some of the round parts of the bird like for example around the belly. I can't really have a a very sharp transition there because that, that part of the bird is fairly round so the transition is also going to be smoother. 
Another good thing to do when you're drawing is to rotate your drawing. That way you can draw from angles that feel more convenient for you, and more comfortable. But here I'm using it to point the tip of the brush towards the edges which I want to remain clean. Now when I am recording I normally don't uh, rotate my drawings very often but if you're not recording I highly recommend that you rotate your drawing especially when you're working with charcoal it's very useful um, here I'm going to use some vine charcoal to do the shadow area in this uh, wing and also to create some shadows uh, which are cast uh, which are casted from the wing onto the onto the body of the bird so I'm going to mix this area which I covered with compressed charcoal with the area which I covered with vine charcoal and hopefully I'll create some nice looking shadows. And the reason why I used a bristle brush rather than a softer brush is because I needed to push that vine charcoal a little bit more into the grain of the paper so that it kind of sticks more. Alright, a quick break. So let's sum up what I've done so far. This is looking pretty good. Um, the sketch was done pretty well and the goose looks realistic and proportionate. Uh, most of the shading of the larger uh, parts is done. We have all of our larger areas of lighter and darker value in place. Uh, I have nice contrast between this wing on the left and the one on the right because of the light source uh, this side of the wing is facing away from the light source that's why it's so dark and this one is fa facing towards the light source that's why it's a lot lighter we also have a nice range of value here on the body between the lighter side here and the shadow side on the belly here and we have a nice transition between those two so this is mostly done in terms of uh, larger shading and now I need to move on to smaller details to shade those details and maybe uh, put in some more textures and then eventually uh, I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit and that should be it. Uh, so this is pretty good. I've only spent about 20-25 minutes of work so far. Uh, this part here around the wings because of all the feathers is going to be a little bit more complicated so maybe I should have picked a slightly simpler subject to draw but this is fine I think I will be able to cover everything I already talked about so let's finish this drawing <clears throat> so I'm gonna move on with the detail and I'm gonna try to define some of the feathers in the wings a little bit more so that I can give those uh, uh, wings a little more structure so that we can feel like there are some layers of feathers there. I'm not going to make it too detailed because my reference photo isn't super large and honestly I don't really want to make this a very detailed drawing. This is just a shorter demonstration even though it is a fairly realistic drawing. But you can see how I'm uh, uh, shading the individual feathers and now I'm uh, trying to add some darker value to make some of them stand out. Uh, but what I will also try to achieve is that um, it feels like uh, the top part of each of these feathers, because they're kind of overlapping, and the top part of each of these feathers is a little bit lighter and the bottom is a little bit darker because of the light source. So I'm, I'm going to try to achieve that effect and later if necessary I'm going to uh, create some highlights and further define individual feathers uh, using a pencil eraser. But the important thing for me here is to make sure that I, ha I retain that contrast between the this uh, lighter wing which is getting light from above and the the wing which is facing away from the light source and which is in the shadow so as long as I can keep that contrast the bird will appear very very realistic so I blended those feathers a little bit with a tutelion and now I'm adding some darker feathers 
in this uh, shadow side of the wing on the right. So I'm going to try to give that a little more detail and structure as well. Uh, but probably a little bit less is uh, a little bit less work is needed here because it's um, a little bit more difficult to discern. And also I'm going to I'm going to be adding some something like a texture to the body because there are also some smaller feathers and some variations in the color of the feathers on the body but again I have to make sure that I don't ruin the larger contrast between the lighter and darker areas that I created so I have to preserve those transitions and I have to preserve that contrast so that my uh, drawing would remain realistic I can't get caught up in the details too much the larger relationships are naturally far more important than the details and the textures. But here in this phase I am refining these details because I want the bird to be as realistic as possible for this relatively small drawing. And now I'm adding some of the finishing touches using a pencil eraser. I'm basically trying to remove some of the value in some areas and trying to <clears throat> pull some highlights trying to make some of these lighter portions stand out maybe enhance the contrast in some areas and occasionally clean up some of the edges and here I'm shading uh, these feathers or, or rather I'm erasing the upper portion of these feathers trying to kind of uh, separate them a little bit more, give them a little more structure. And I'm also pretty happy with the way the head of the goose came out because I improved its appearance a little bit but I'm just softening these feathers a little bit. I don't want too much texture there uh, because in the distance they do appear a little bit smoother. And I'm just gonna do a little bit more shading with a combination of uh, Tutilian <clears throat> and my pencil and I'm cleaning up and putting, putting down the finishing touches the drawing is pretty much done so I hope you found this video useful or entertaining don't forget to check out my other videos in this series of charcoal basics and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye for now.